Today we're going to learn how to balance oxidation reduction reactions. In the last lecture, you learned how to assign oxidation numbers. So you'll get practice with that and you'll learn how to balance these entire reactions. You have all of these notes written down for you already and we'll just go through the steps. So first, assign oxygen numbers to all atoms in the equation, atoms or ions. And I'm going to erase that. I'm going to delete that and show that to you. So silver is a pure silver is a pure element, zero. Pure elements are zero. Ions have the charge of their ion. The oxidation state is the charge, so that's plus one. This one right here is plus one because there's a plus one here. Polyatomic ions. The ion is the oxidation numbers add up to the charge of the polyatomic ion. We know O is always negative two. Negative two times three is negative six. This has to be a number that when added to negative six will add to negative one, the number is five. Over here, we have the rule O is always negative two, so N has to be plus two, because for compounds we add up to zero. We have a rule A is just always plus one, O is always negative two, there we go. That's how we got those oxidation numbers. Now let's see who changed. Silver went from zero to one, nitrogen went from five to two. That's what we've got written here. These are our changes. Now, this means that silver lost one electron. Each nitrogen atom gained three electrons. To go from five to two is three electrons. But we have to balance the number of electrons. We cannot have excess electrons sitting around. So we have to figure out how do we make this change of one in the silver equal the change of three in the nitrogens? we just make three silvers. So three times the change by one electron for silver is equal to one times the change by three electrons for each nitrogen. So we have a change of three electrons total. And this is what it'll look like. Um, the oxygen and the hydrogen, let's erase this for a minute. Oops. The oxygens and the hydrogens just work themselves out. We had to put threes in front of the silvers and one's in front of the nitrogen to make the electrons balance out. Now we'll do O's. So O's, you do O's before H's. We have three O's here. We have one O here. That means I need two more O's. So I put a two in front of the H2O to balance the oxygens. And now I do the hydrogens. We've got four H's right here. So I put a four on the H plus to balance the hydrogens, and that one's done. Next one. Okay, so step one, assign oxidation numbers, identify the atoms which change oxidation number. Let's do that. We're gonna assign oxidation numbers. Now these are all gonna show all at once. I'll explain how they came out. Pure atoms, pure elements, zero, zero. Ions, oxidation state is their charge, so plus one. These have to add up to negative two. Each O is negative two. O is always negative two unless it contradicts with a different rule above the rule for oxidation state designations. So O is negative two. We have four of those. That adds up to negative eight right here. The total has to add up to negative two. So the S must be six. So that six minus eight because of the four O's. Six minus eight is negative two. Ions, oxidation state is their charge. O is negative two, we keep going over that. If O is negative two, and we have two of those, the S must be four in, all, in order for this to add up to zero. H is always plus one, O is always zero. So let's see who changed. Chromium went from zero to three, zero to three. Sulfur went from six to four, down by two. Notice we have an up by three, and a down by two. So. We need to balance out the three and the two. It's not gonna be five, it's going to be six. This is thinking least common multiple. So we can put a two in front of the chromiums, a three in front of the sulfurs to make the total change in electrons for the chromium six and the total change in electrons for the sulfur six because we have to balance our electrons and we'd balance the O and the H by inspection. So we would put our twos in front of the chromiums, our threes in front of the sulfurs, then you do the oxygen. So we had 12 O's here, 
3 times 4 is 12. We had 6 O's here, so we need another 6 O's. That's where the 6 comes from in the water. I could delete that so you don't see that right now. So now we know we have to put a 6 in front of the O, and we have to put a 12 in front of the H plus because we have 12 H's right here, and there are no H's anywhere else. Okay, this one's a bit more complicated. You can ignore it. It would be an extra credit problem. So if you want to skip to the next part, you can. The next part is where you try these on your own. And at the end of the video, I will show you the answers. Um, so if you want to skip this, you're welcome to. This would be when we have a test or a quiz, I'd have an extra credit problem like this. This one is where it says, identify the atoms which change oxidation number. Insert temporary coefficients so that there are the same number of atoms that changed oxidation state on each side. You might want to add in so that there are the same number of atoms that changed oxidation state on each side. And let me show you what that means. You're going to learn in this problem, where are we? This one, that the chromium is going to change oxidation state. And the iron, you should be able to see, went from two to three right away. So chromium's going to change state. Notice there's two chromiums right here. And there's only one over here, so I have to stick a 2 in there temporarily. It might change, but we're going to stick a 2 in there to balance the chromiums who changed oxidation state. We don't do this for the oxygens or the hydrogens because they are not going to change state for these problems. You assign your oxidation numbers. So O is negative 2. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. The total has to add up to negative 2. So if I have 14 here, the total here has to be 12, but I have two of them, so each is 6. 6 times 2 is positive 12. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. 12 and negative 14 is negative 2. That's how these numbers came out. All right, H is plus 1 because it's a plus 1. Ions always have the number of their charge as their oxidation state. Fe is plus 2. Cr is plus 3. Fe is plus 3, H is always plus 1, O is always negative, one, negative 2, sorry, O is always negative 2, unless one of the oxidation state rules above the oxygen rules contradicts that oxygen could be negative 2. So who changed oxidation number? Chromium went from 6 to 3. 6 to 3. Iron went from 2 to 3. So chromium changed by 3, iron changed by 6, but notice we have two chromiums. So really the total electrons for these chromiums each changes by 3, but I have two chromiums, so the total change for the chromiums is 6 right now. Let's see what happens here. So steps 1 and 2, we assigned our oxidation numbers. We saw how much things changed by... Um, you don't have to write this entire part out when you're doing these on your own. This is just for when you're first learning this. Okay, so the iron goes up by one. The chromiums, two chromiums, each went down by three, but the total is six. Three electrons per chromium times two chromiums gives you six electrons total. So we need to balance the electrons. We have six on this side, one on this side. The only way to make those equal is to multiply the irons by six. So we put a 6 in front of the irons, and we're going to put a 1 in front of this chromium because we're not changing the chromiums. We leave the 2 here because each chromium changes by 3. I need two chromiums. This chromium was at 6. I've already got my two chromiums, so this will be a 1. Then I balance the oxygens by inspection. Just looking, we'll, we'll end up with 7 oxygens over here, so I need to have 7 oxygens here. And then 7 times 2 is 14 H's, so I'll have 14 H's over here. And here is your answer. All right. You should pause the video and try some of these on your own. If you cannot do them on your own whatsoever, you're just totally lost, how do I assign oxidation states, um, you can look at the answers. But just remember, this would be 0, H is plus 1, O is negative 2, you can calculate the S. O is negative 2, you can calculate the C. O negative 2, calculate the S. Plus 1, negative 2. There's your oxidation numbers. Remember to add up to negative 1 here. Negative 2, so you can calculate MN. Negative 2 for the O, you can calculate MN.
Same thing here, same thing here. You know your H, you know your O, you can calculate your N. So calculate your oxidation numbers up on top, figure out who changed, and then what numbers have to go in front of the things who changed by balancing your electrons. And here are your balanced reactions. You're supposed to have paused this. <laughs> You're trying these on your own. I'll go away from those for a minute. Pause and try these on your own if you haven't paused yet. And here are the answers now. Oops. There's some of the answers. Um, it's showing you all the oxidation states, how they changed, and then here's your balanced equation. Next one, all the oxidation states, how they changed, balanced equation right here. Oops. And then all your oxidation numbers up here, oxidation states, how things changed, what to do, and your balanced equation. That's it.